In life, timing is everything. In 1991, the new provincial government in British Columbia was much more receptive to environmental causes, and Joe was ready to carry the campaign to protect the Cowichan full time. He became director of the BC Wildlife Federation and was active in the Steelhead Society and the Fly Fishing Association. Today, about 75% of the lands bordering the river are protected as park. Some of the land was purchased and the provincial government was able to swap forested crown land for some of the private forest lands. Joe is trying to get another two million out of the federal government for the remaining available private land on the river, protecting 80% of the upper river. The upper portion of the river above Scutts Fall is key to the fishery. This is where many of the fish in the system spawn. Joe is still fighting, but today he carries the fight alone, no longer affiliated with any organization. He's always been an environmentalist. He's always worked at it, you know, ever since I've known him. He's got a, a way with him that he can, he can get people together to do work on the river. You know, and they can get DFO and it's a federal or provincial government. He can get everybody together to do if they want to do a project in the river. He just has a way of getting, getting them all together at the right time to get a project done. Yeah, they say Joe's River. He's a custodian of the river. And they'll say, yep, this is Joe's River. That belongs to Joe. Joe has been instrumental in having the fishing regulations changed to fly fishing only on the upper portion of the river, above the trestle. And he is lobbying for fly fishing only on the entire upper river. Ironically, some of the other guides on the river are against his proposal. Most use spin casting techniques on the lower portion of the river because this guarantees their clients will catch a world famous Cowichan River steelhead. Uh, if a fly fisherman catches one out of every six to ten trips, he's doing quite well. Whereas a gear fisherman, he doesn't catch six or ten each trip. He's having a very poor day. So it's very, it's very, very easy to catch steelhead with gear. And very, very difficult to catch steelhead with, with flies. And even though it's catch and release, a lot of those fish are gonna... Exactly. There's a certain mortality. But it's not even that. It's that a lot of these fish that are above Scott's Falls are in a spawning mode. And the, uh, the gear guy gets those spawning fish. Dark fish, kelts. And uh, so when he catches them, uh, what damage is that doing to them? You know? So a lot of guys say, well, why don't you just close it completely then? And that would be the worst thing you could do for the river, because then that just opens it up for poachers. If there's nobody out here fly fishing and watching and reporting things, then, uh, then the poachers have a heyday. So that, that is not the answer. The answer is to have a method that doesn't catch hardly any fish. It still allows you to go out there because you love going out there. So therefore, it should be fly fishing only. Like most people, they look at a fish and they want to put it in a plate and eat it. And Joel, he doesn't want to have any harm done to the fish even when he catches it. He brings it in quick. He's got to release it as fast as he can. And when he's looking at it, he's holding that fish before he lets it go. He never touches it anyway in the net. And he'll just say, what a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful animal. And it's back in the water quick. Very little stress on the fish. Very little damage to him. For other guys, you know, they'll play them till they're exhausted and, you know, not with Joe, it's a different thing. He has a lot of respect for fish, a lot of respect for the river. Joe decided a long time ago that he was going to save his river, the river he grew up on. The Cowichan River has been designated as a BC Heritage River and is currently under consideration for National Heritage River status. A fitting testament to the tenacity of this local hero who had a vision. If the fishery had been lost, none of this would have happened. Along the way, 
He has had a lot of help from a variety of people and groups, but he has been the central figure in the unfolding drama of the Cowichan River story. Joe Cecil has showed us that one person can make a difference. He saved an entire river for future generations. The river is more important than any of us. That's the way I look at things anyway. As long as this river is treated, treated well, it'll look after people. Yeah, it's, it's been a lot of work and it's going to, you know, there's still lots more work to be done. I mean, the issues on the river just never, ever stop.